to experiment eight pre-lab discussions for synthesis of cyclohexene by Dr. Mamari. Uh, the purpose of this experiment is to, again, we're setting up distillation apparatus, so practice more with distillation apparatus. Uh, your product is organic compound, you need to dry the compound. Drying compound is different from evaporating the compound. Drying meaning to remove the moisture. So in order to dry the compound, after you isolate, you just add drying agent to remove the moisture. And when you have two phases, you are using separatory funnel, you're confused which one is organic layer, which one is the aqueous layer. How would you recognize that? This experiment actually adds that piece also. It says after you separate the lower level, add some aqueous solution, uh, add some water to see if it's one phase or two phase. And from that, you could say what you have removed, is it aqueous or organic layer? We are going to synthesize cyclohexene, which is an alkene. Alkene has CC double bond functional group. And to identify that bond, we would do chemical tests. We would do bromine tests for unsaturation. We do permanganate tests as well, or Bayer's test, which shows that we, the compound has CC, CC double bond. Elimination of alcohol. The other name for elimination of the alcohol is um, dehydration, because we are using alcohol or tertiary alcohol for this experiment for elimination. And we are going to study the reaction. The uh, elimination uh, requires like a leaving group as well, just like substitution reaction, it requires leaving group. Um, alcohol has OH and OH is not a good leaving group. So first step of this reaction is protonation of the alcohol to change the OH to OH2. Now that has changed to OH2 is much better leaving group is going to leave. And when it does leave, it gives us carbocation. Now we have the carbocation. In order for elimination to be complete, complete, a hydrogen needs to be removed. If the, the carbocation that is formed is symmetrical, like what I have in this example, or for cyclohexanol, it doesn't matter if the beta hydrogen or the hydrogen that is being removed is removed from the carbon adjacent and clockwise or counterclockwise. It does not matter where the hydrogen is removed because we still get cyclohexene, regardless if the double bond is in this position or if in this position, is going to give us cyclohexene. Sometimes your alcohol is not like a symmetrical, like when you have here two uh, butene, when OH is being uh, two butanol, uh, when OH is being protonated uh, and removed, the carbocation that it forms on second carbon, you have two options, removing hydrogen from first carbon, which gives one butene, removing, which is, gives one butene, or removing hydrogen from second carbon, which gives two butene. Now, when there is a competition or when there is a possibility of formation of two products, uh, we look at the stability of the product and based on the stability of the product or SASEF rule, uh, two butene is more stable and specifically the trans two butene is more stable and that is going to be the major product. For today's experiment, or for this experiment, experiment eight, since we are using cyclohexanol, 
there is no major minor product, only one product will form. The other byproduct or possible byproduct is substitution product. For substitution, we need a good nucleophile and um, also um, the temperature control. Um, if we use high temperature, we would it would favor elimination. So the two factors that is helping us not to get substitution product or at least get less of the substitution product is that using a strong acid for protonation, this strong acid is going to yield very weak conjugate base, which is a very weak nucleophile. So if you have a weak nucleophile, the chance for um, substitution reaction is going to be lowered. Also using high temperature is going to favor elimination. So we hope that we get only elimination product and not the substitution product. And we don't have a major minor product because it's symmetrical. If you look at the reaction for in the lab manual, I have the boiling point of the reactant and the product. The reactant, which is cyclohexanol, boils at 161, but the product at 83. These two are significantly different from each other, but to make sure, so if they're significantly different, we could use the uh, simple distillation, but to make sure that separation is going to be the you know most efficient, we are using fractional distillation. Because the product has lower boiling point compared to reactant, we can remove the product by distillation as it is forming. So the reversible reaction does not kick in either. And as soon as we uh, collect it, we are going to separate from the, um, you know, we are going to dry the sample, making sure that we add like drying agent to dry the sample to avoid reversible reaction, which is hydration of the, of the uh, alkene that gives alcohol. So we are going to distill, uh, remove the product. And as we remove the product, we are going to then add some dehydrating agent and hydrous agent to remove the water. The setup for fractional distillation, it is explained in experiment two, how to set up. The only difference here is that we are using ice bath. Um, the purpose of using ice bath here is to make sure that it helps the condensation. So it doesn't go to the vapor and the sample has low boiling point because the sample has low boiling point, we want to help condensation. This ice bath, it helps the condensation and is going to prevent from re-vaporization. So if you have an open container at room temperature, some of it, it can vaporize and it go to the room, uh, but keeping in the ice, it will um, prevent that. The reagent that you are using or the reagent that is used here for dehydration is phosphoric acid. That's 85% phosphoric acid. Uh, because it's distillation, we want to make sure to use boiling chips to prevent bumping. Uh, replacing the, the or placing the receiving flask in ice water bath, regardless of the shape of the ice water bath, Placing an ice water bath is going to help that condensation. We want to stop the distillation when we see like white fumes inside the boiling flask. If it starts fuming or making like white cloud, you stop the distillation. You definitely stop distillation if you see it's almost dry. And when you stop distillation, means that you must lower the heating mantle, just unplugging the power regulator or turning off power regulator, it doesn't cool off fast enough for distillation to stop. So separated funnel is used, as I said, in this reaction, in this experiment to 
um, clean up the product. And uh, the product is washed with uh, water to remove any water soluble impurities. It's washed with sodium bicarbonate and washed with water again. Sodium bicarbonate would remove any trace of, of acid, so it would stop the reaction. To dry the sample, calcium chloride pellets is going to be used. And after the sample is dry, we measure the mass to calculate percent yield. We measure the refractive index uh, to confirm purity of the sample. And we do two chemical tests. These two chemical tests is to confirm presence of CC double bond because we are making alkene as the product. Thank you so much. And I, again, I've been repeating this. I hope that this is going to help you with the, uh, it's going to help you with the understanding of the experiment and the pre-lab quiz. Mm -hmm.